Hey, AJ. Hi, Brian. Fourth of July, Lucy in the sky. I remember pine trees and the coat of many colors. I was 19. I'd do anything. Shit like that now scares me, but I'd like to do it again. Is that 311? It's fucking 311 day. Let's go. <laughs> no, let's let's not go <laughs> let's stop let's stop right there what? I, I, think we, I think we've already gone too far you've already gone you know, too far yeah we unpopular got, opinion i feel like we that, haven't gone far enough aj that, that kind of made me lose friends in high school <laughs> i i don't really like 311 very much yeah, that's not an unpopular opinion i know I don't, most people don't like 311 i think oh that is yeah not how i remember <laughs> Uh, by the way, that that was that was all for you, Samson. I saw you post it in the Discord, and I was like, "Oh shit, it's three eleven day." That's my favorite uh, favorite lyric uh, of three eleven. So, <sighs> AJ, do they have any metal songs? You're so boring. <laughs> <laughs> what? Can we start the show? Okay, let's go. This is PSVR Gamescast Live. We film live every single Monday, West Day, and Two West Friday right here on YouTube. We do it live 6 p.m. Eastern for your viewing pleasure. We also care about your oral pleasure, though. That's why we put this thing up on podcast services of your choice. Thanks for our good friend, Rye Pop. My name is Brian Pop from the channel right here, PSVR Without Parole. And the channel over here to my left, your right, it's AJ from The Underground. PSVR Underground. What is up, Brian? What is up, Gamecats? Man, I am just a mess right now. I was not ready. Six o'clock snuck up on me really fast. You, know, that you know why? Yeah, that's daylight why. Daylight savings time. Bro, I had to close the blinds. It's still light out here. <laughs> like, I know. I, 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 I'm, I'm blinding. Got, I've got a really bad problem over here, bro. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, move, <laughs> I gotta move some bookshelves back in this fucking piece here. Like, just block oh, out goodness. the sun. Wow. It was, dude, I didn't, uh, I, when I moved all the games out of this room, and because people were like, I, I I love seeing the city in the background. It looks like a real talk show, Brian. I was like, that's cool. Completely forgot about daylight savings time and that this would happen for many, many months every year. <laughs> it's blinding. What is up, Brian? What is up, Game Cats? Happy Monday. And I know that Mondays usually suck, especially. Why, why do we even do a sound check? <laughs> especially, <laughs> apparently, for Twitcher. Whoa, what uh, but that's okay, Twitcher. Because we are here to ensure your Monday sucks. Just a little less. This much? This much. This much. Samson 143 <laughs> VR. I want to talk to Samson with the $5 tip says, hey, great intro. I thought so. Um, I didn't I, I didn't realize. I, I hadn't like picked up a guitar or like sang in a while. And so like in the back of my head, I was going to do that for the intro. And then the second I started singing, I was like, oh, shit, this, this is like off key. This is out of tune. My voice is shaking. I was like, you know what? Fucking I kind of wanted to ditch after the very first word, but glad I stuck with it because I made at least one person happy. AJ, it's been a week since we talked. Almost like intentionally. Not really. Shh. <laughs> don't, ru don't ruin the facade. <laughs> what have you been up to, man? What's going on? Oh, man. A little bit. A little bit. Of everything. Uh, you know streamed continuing my stream of legendary tales of course um because that's basically all my channel is now honestly brian i've been playing a lot of redacted and also playing some other redacted um so it's been a, a busy week despite not um despite not like you know making tons of content i've been playing a bunch of stuff behind the scenes i uh yeah, there's there's no shortage of games right now, and it's kind of like you know, <laughs> always considered that despite, the best problem to have, despite what people would have you believe. There's no Dude, games, AJ. For oh, real. I'm just a whiny little bitch on the internet. <laughs> oh, you have to hear everything I'm thinking. This hey, is the I'm problem with the internet. <laughs> Everyone, everyone's got an opinion, and you got to hear it all. God oh, damn man. it, dude. Um, yeah, I, I yeah, mean, that's, I've that's I've also the problem with us at this point. <laughs> 
I, it, it's it's a endless void of yeah nothing missed, but yeah and to be clear i like hearing everybody's opinion i like this to be a place where everybody's opinion can be heard i like that's a, kind of like without parole like what i feel like it's sort of founded on it's like we get to sit up here and like talk shit and stuff but like i want to like be the voice of like a, a lot of people saying you know what, what what are people saying and um but man man the trolls have been out in full force and i no longer believe that <laughs> i feel like most people can go fuck themselves <laughs> most um, people are good brian it's just it's yep. just the internet is the first most easily accessible place to come and vent and let out all your frustration and yeah and leave a stupid comment that makes no sense and uh yeah that's that's why you know you end up seeing a lot of that um yeah. It happens, man. It happens. You just gotta. I just. I just put my blinders on. It's the first time I ever will, will recommend putting on blinders. And bro, you know, all, come, all come, come, run, come run, come run without parole for for a few days. Hey, uh, I, I, feel, I feel like you'd come out of the the other side a little bit different. That's all I say. All the people having fun are either playing their shit and actually, you know, like playing stuff, playing games, enjoying them, yeah. or they're here in this lovely community full of these lovely people we see in the chat indeed indeed um yeah i know it's just dude, people go on the internet just to start a fight i I've, I've i've lost my belief that like people even have i mean a lot of people have bad opinions of course um but i, I think a lot of people just go online to start a fight uh just to start some uh fanboy wars and shit and like, you know, sometimes I ignore them all. And then sometimes I feed them a little bit and get some extra engagement for the <laughs> channel. And, uh, and boy, did I do that this weekend. Um, I totally caught you in the act. Like, I'm like, I saw you responding to these like super negative comments. And you're just like, thanks for thanks for sharing your feedback. And I was like, huh? Right. I'm, then, so, I'm so glad you're I, enjoying your headset. That was asking like, <laughs> kind of like stock response. Yeah. It doesn't even like make sense. You're just responding to increase the engagement on the, on it the is. videos. I love it, man. It, it works. It. it actually works. You, you totally <laughs> ignored what, everything that they're saying. Yeah. And you're just like, awesome, man. So glad you're having a great time. And it's like a 12 page rant about like how they hate everything. <laughs> it's good, man. That that's, that's a, that's a good strategy. I like it. It's hey, uh, speaking of redacted, there's, uh, I certainly wasn't trying to clue people into what we've been playing by putting this trailer up on the screen. Did you see the new Cube trailer? The new Cube trailer is out. This is what we, we've sort of been waiting for. The developers were actually like holding off, um, you know, uh, giving us a release date. The game's been done for a little bit, it seems. Uh, they got through Sony certification, and then it was like, well, where the hell's the game? Uh, and they were like, oh, we're, we're, we wanted to make sure there was a nice trailer first. And I was like, oh, wow, you guys. All right, cool. What did you think of the uh, this the new trailer? It's playing right now, Bro, full screen. Redacted. They nailed this trailer uh, because it got me. It took me from like curious to like very hyped and excited about this game. It's just a really well done trailer that that's really exciting and uh, yeah, man. Um, it it looks it looks really really good, and they also gave some extra details with it uh, with that trailer. Things like. Uh, shared a little bit more as to like what you can do like like you know it, it's it sounds like it's mostly a sandbox game but but then there's like stuff objectives that you can follow that kind of teach you um and then uh there's like this a lot of different scenery and i just i can't wait to see some of the the stuff that people build like um there there's a lot of like these you know structures really beautiful structures uh, in the trailer and they look really cool, but, um, yeah, yeah man, it, it's looking, it was a really, really good trailer. Great job on them. And of course there's like official mod support. So when people, uh, are building things, uh, and, and, and uploading them and, uh, it's going to be stuff that we're, we're going to be able to build over on PSVR too. Uh, it looks like some of these things are going to be huge but it's pretty man that's what i'll say this trailer huge. is is that is that H Y H Y U G E? you fucking nailed it dude <laughs> absolutely huge um i think uh, but this show dude like uh, i'm so uh, I, I was like man they sure are taking their time getting this trailer done but this is a beautiful trailer yeah beautiful yeah. so good for them now it just needs to live up to the trailer it seems like it's got people's attention it's got like what eighty thousand views on youtube that's pretty good yeah i mean um, for a psvr2 think- game that's called for a game that's called cube on PSVR 2, uh, yeah, that's a lot of views. 
Well, this game has had some coverage from like YouTubers and stuff for I think a long time, at least a year. Yeah. So, and it's you know it's supposed to be like a, obviously a heavily Minecraft inspired Minecraft clone is what people call it. Sure. Um, and and that's an exciting prospect to a lot of people. There's a lot of people that love those types of games where you just kind of uh, get to build and create, and it's got that sandbox element to it. Those can be. Uh, pretty fun and immersive to get lost in and and if you like building stuff uh it looks like the potential to be a really good game in that realm kill artist one the dream weaver game cat with the five dollar tip says i got my pax east four day passes in the mail today starting to get excited uh i got some notification about some uh the press badges going out um so hopefully we'll be seeing those really soon uh pax is jesus it's not this week it's next week is that fucking real oh god dude I just get really fucking nervous all of a sudden. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's cool, man. I, I kill our, um, is What's crazy is that the Saturday passes have been sold out for a while. And I've seen some people like Dead Ringer uh, who, you know, kind of held off on getting their uh, uh, getting their passes or, or buying PAX passes. Uh, suddenly in like a little bit of a quandary being like, oh, man, I'm just going to buy Friday and Saturday. Uh, but Saturday has been sold out for a little while. Um, I guess the, I guess the thing we'll say about that is that. Uh, every time I've been to PAX, there are people selling tickets out front. Uh, and so, you know, as long as you're careful, hopefully every uh, you should be able to get in uh, any day that you want to. Make sure you don't buy any kind of Im imitation passes. <laughs> don't want any Andrew Bailey uh -oh. says, did the clocks go forward in the USA? Yes. And stuff? And no one's happy about it. No one's happy about it. I forget. Yeah, I forget that this does. This only happens over here. And then, <laughs> and then everyone's like, oh, what happened? Right. Uh, right. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, every, uh, but if it makes you feel better, Andrew Bailey, I also didn't realize until like 10 minutes before the show. And I was like, why isn't the sun down yet? I was like, oh, shit. No wonder why I slept like shit last night. I feel like I've missed out on an hour of sleep. It, I prepared this time last year. It got me really bad to where like, I felt like I wanted that hour back the entire year. Mm -hmm. Um, this year I was a little bit more prepared and, um, I still got shit for sleep, but I, I was at least like mentally prepared for it. And so it feels like things will, will balance out better this year, but I straight up it threw, if I felt like it threw me off my game, the entire of la the entirety of last year. I wasn't about to let that happen again. <laughs> nice. Uh, Niles trying the game feline with a $5 tip. <laughs> Says, going to build my dream house in cube since I'll never afford it IRL. Cube. Cube. I have to, I know it's just cube, but yeah, I got to say it like cube. You can say it however you want to. Um, smart on them, I guess, for uh, changing the spelling for SEO reasons. Try, can you imagine trying to be like, <laughs> search for cube, the game? It's like, yeah. Probably a million things that are similar. Uh, so throwing a throwing Good a Y point. in there really helped out. I'm guessing. I don't really know the answer, but it's probably the reason they did it. Um, I hey, could have used a Q. A Q. So why, why does that? That sounds so familiar. Was there already a cube with a Q? Was I mean, Cubert. <laughs> yeah. All right. The, maybe the chat will help me. I'm not going to spend. Everyone's trying to very, figure it out. Yeah, people are very unhappy with daylight savings time. Dude, they tried to abolish it. Yeah. But it didn't work. We can't get anything done in this country. <laughs> it's fucking <No>. ridiculous. <laughs> um guys, uh make sure you uh hit us up on Discord, click the link in the description below if you're not on our Discord. It's uh it's pretty crazy. Uh it's where conversations like these happen 24 seven. So my apologies in advance. Um, but that's where you can get your questions in on the show without even paying a penny by leaving it in the viewer takeover channel, uh, just to answer absolute prime 55's question. He's like, what's viewer takeover? It's all right. It's all right. That's the answer. So uh, just like Greg did, he writes hashtag viewer takeover. It seems like a lot of gamers feel like it's their job to be upset, but I think we, we've already tackled this a little bit, but let's just bookend with it you kind of you kind of led with this at the start of the show <laughs> i did i said between taking every bit of news in the worst possible way and taking any tidbit of information and building a paradise out of speculation it seems like people want to get the rug pulled out from under them like they think everything is bad now but uh but this thing i know very little about will be exactly what i want then inevitably with hopes so high they are dashed why can't folks just be reasonable and be grateful for what we have and and, and i know so, Gre and i know what i know greg's not saying don't complain, 
right? He's not right. saying like if there's if there's reasons to be upset, then but you know obviously if something's broken. But AJ, I, I I don't know if you agree with this, but I come from a different time of game development where there wasn't this back and forth, this interaction with developers. I was waiting for okay. the next Lucasfilm game or Sierra game to drop, and and it came out, and it was different than what I expected because I had only played games that they had made before, and then something new was in it and that's just how it was and you either liked it or you didn't like it but there wasn't this outrage about every little thing um and and also like also while i was growing up i don't remember saying oh i only like this genre or i hate this genre right even sports i remember like on nes like the you know tech mobile and uh, ice hockey and, and voyage of steel um like there's so many like sports games that i actually played when i was a kid I just don't remember like saying, "Oh, this is this game's too small," or "This guy," or "I don't like this." It's like we were just sort of we just sort of loved video games in a way that we wanted to try everything we could get our hands on. And I think maybe video games are too accessible now. People have all this disposable income, and so people just buy like you know you're not you're not getting one game every few months. You're getting maybe a couple games a week. Too cheap, and so it's a lot of different people from a lot of different coming from a lot of different places so you can't really just generalize everybody but of course um you know i think the logic behind it if you're if you're trying to be logical here um you know it is it is up to developers and marketing teams or whoever uh it to kind of convey and me and provide like messaging and what happens is if they don't if they don't provide like clear, concise messaging, then yeah, people get in their own like imaginations a little bit. They get maybe excited for what they hope or what they want, or they think, you know, it, it, and in some cases, um, some people are misled by marketing. And uh, of course for those people, like, you know, for people that are wanting information and don't have it and don't have anything to go off of, like, you know, I, I sympathize with them. But for people where it's like they tell you exactly what it is and then you're like outraged uh, when it's something that, you know, is, is something else. Um, that's where like, you know, I, I I hold no sympathy for those people. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you want everything to be good. You know, I think I think we're in a day and age where a lot of games have these gaming has evolved a, a lot. There's been, a you know, the hundreds of thousands of games released in this day and age. And, and so now there's a lot more competition than there used to be. And so people really want uh, something to, you know, a lot of games have to compete very hard and stick out from the bunch. And, and so a lot of the times, you know, the gamers expectations is higher set higher because of this competition out there. And, um, you know, oftentimes these games, fall short or uh you know not every game is gonna be the best of its kind ever made and that's okay but you know a lot of people get wrapped up in their emotions and uh rather than think about things they they just let their they just letting their feelings out and you know we're we're all human man at the end of the day and yep. like uh except most for brian yeah i'm, I'm <laughs> definitely not <laughs> um you know, I, I, I wasn't listening to what you were saying because I had this big chunk of hair right here that I was like, I don't know where this is supposed to go. Like, and I just kind of shoved it up into my hat. Um, that's why. Yeah. But yeah, it's it, it's it's a little bit of everything, man. Yeah. It, it's just a little bit of everything that that causes this to happen. I also I also think that people need to start understanding. Like you said, there's so many games out there now. People need to understand not not every game is for you. Like if you're like, right. I fucking hate this. Okay. Well, you know how many people love the game that you're shitting all over. Or or, yeah. or or are really really interested in playing it, probably a lot, right? Not every game has to be for you, uh, and and the fact that people are so uh, self righteous and and up their own ass about all this stuff being like, oh well, it doesn't have this. I'm not fucking. But yeah, well, guess what? It wasn't being made for you to begin with. Like right. so, and and this is and this is something as you know, as a host of Without Parole, a uh, reviewer Without Parole, it it unfortunately means that I have to play a lot of shit that I don't care about, right? But. So much stuff. <laughs> so much stuff, right? But so but I use something, but, something that we're even featuring today, right? But but on but I come out the other side, like being like, but but understanding the merits of it and understanding who it's made for and understanding the people that would really enjoy it, right? And so, right. and I think that's why I take so much 
um, why, why I take so much of the, the negativity on without parole personally, because you're like, oh, another indie game, another piece of shit, another piece of shit. You haven't fucking played any of the games that you're complaining about, and I have, right? Yes, they may be indie games, but they're fucking good most of the time. And they're unique experiences that you do not get on the fucking flat screen. And, and, yeah, and indie games don't imply what they used to. Like, like it's kind of dated just to assume. It's kind of old, old thinking to think that, uh, you know, just because a game is made by a small group of people or something that it can't be this, you know, have a very large scope and design and stuff and features um, because we've seen that happen countless times. Now, it's not usually how it goes down, right. but there have been games that have proven that. Um, and that's that's really exciting. That's really encouraging that, you know, uh, that's that's kind of been the fun part of PSVR or VR in general. It's like, you know, there's these high profile games, but some of the best games, some of the best experiences have come out of nowhere and been something that I had zero like knowledge of zero interest in and then uh and then all of a sudden they can end up number one on the sales charts yeah, just we, like we are talking legendary about legendary right tales. Yeah. <laughs> moving, moving on andrew billy with the two quid says at 1.75 <laughs> speed brian and aj are game chipmunks and stuff aj <laughs> As much as we like to thank all the game chipmunks in the chat, that's not who we think every Monday, is it? That's right, Brian. We would like to thank those who support us in another way by changing their names, something GameCat, something GameCat related, or something GameCat adjacent, as you, as something GameCat adjacent like to say. And this week, holy crap, man, we have another six GameCats to welcome to the GameCat. Juju. Dude, y'all are killing it, man. Another week another six let's go starting with <laughs> ryan mccatfrey bing dude fucking i don't i don't i don't even care what the other five are this is the best one of the day <laughs> ryan, ryan mccatfrey it's the best way to troll ryan mccatfrey ever oh my god unofficial game cat ryan mccatfrey <laughs> i have held back so many things to say about that man yep uh probably for I the best uh, yeah, I'm not going to stick to his level. Uh, we've also got Tybo Barino, the gaming sphinx. Ba 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 Barino. How fucking old am I? I, I God damn. I don't think that's <laughs> Ba Barino. <laughs> uh, uh, did you ever watch Welcome Back, Cotter, or am I on my own little island over here? Uh, I just know the Beach Boys. This is all. It's Barbarain. Uh, okay, yeah. 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 Um, Hi, Barbarino, the gaming sphinx. Dude, that's the ultimate cat. Is the sphinx, right? Yeah, that's like the the lord of the cats. Big, big as a pyramid, they say. Big as a pyramid. <laughs> that's what they We've say. We've also got Uncle Game, Uncle Game the the slime cat, the slime cat, Uncle Game the slime cat. Bing. That was really hard to read for some reason. Right. His his name is Uncle Slime, <laughs> and but his at is Uncle Game the slime cat. Uh, which is which is pretty good. He injected the cat. Holy shit! That profile picture. What am I looking at? I know you can't see it. it wow. Okay. I, everybody's gonna have nightmares tonight. I apologize. I didn't see that at the time. But it's awesome. We've also got <laughs> da -na 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 -na, Inspector Game Cat. Da -na 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 -na. Do -do Bro, to Inspector Game Cat out there, I just want to say that uh, your Game Cat name change instigated like a 20 minute conversation about Inspector, Ga <laughs> Inspector Gadget in the voice chat today uh, over on Discord. So thank you for that because I had forgotten just how much of a buffoon Inspector Gadget is and how Penny and Brain did all the work. Uh, completely forgot. I'll get you next time, Inspector Game Cat. <laughs> uh we've also got you almost had it and then you did this weird fucking laugh at the end <laughs> that was the cat that was the little cat oh <laughs> mad, mad cat i don't remember mad yeah. cat even making noise okay okay right. either, that'll, cool. i could be mixing my cartoons right on. uh you also got jars of ash the definitely not ai game cat <laughs> Bing. i don't trust him i don't trust him at all if anybody's saying they're not ai i feel like well that's proof that you are yeah Yep. Man, AI is getting crazy these days, huh? Sure is. I, I bet the uh, yeah, I bet his profile picture is is game cat. Shit, somebody sent me a bunch of um uh, <laughs> AI generated t shirt uh t shirt images. I shit, I'm sorry I didn't respond to you, whoever you are. Um and uh and, and, and so it's all this like very obviously AI generated sirens on my end. Um 
images with cats with the VR headsets on with like police out the window. Um, great stuff. Uh, but he, he screwed up the slogan. Every single one of the six images he sent me said sirens, uh, sirens on my side. And I was like, oh, you were so close. You were so close. <laughs> I'll, I'll show him off next time. Finally, last, but certainly not least, we've got Quill, the last but not least game cat. <laughs> Bing! I don't know. I think you're you're definitely last, but yeah, not least, not least. That's awesome. I didn't even see that coming. I, I had that. That was not pre-planned. I mean, it was pre-planned by me. I put I put okay. Quill last on purpose because it's last but not least. So you're Do welcome I because I because I, I plan the show, AJ, and you just show up half-assing it as always. <laughs> 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 well, guys, great job. Keep the name changes coming. I love the game cat adjacent names, especially. I love uh, Inspector Game Cat's got to be my favorite. Do 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 do. Mariah McCaffrey's a close second. Brian McCaffrey is my pick of the week. <laughs> Guys, if you love us almost as much as we love you, make sure you change your game cat, your name to something game cat over on YouTube, and then uh, put hashtag game cat in the comments of any without parole video so that AJ will stumble in last minute next week. And give you a shout out just like he gave all these people a shout out uh ryan mccatfrey is in the chat says what <laughs> <laughs> it's about right it's accurate about, yeah yep <laughs> uh aj let's talk about some stuff gaming related um I, I i didn't address this legendary tales patch uh on any show this week that uh, came out a few days ago because i haven't been playing legendary tales however hey hey hey, hey i ryan. do know someone who has <laughs> that is Number one selling in North America and Japan, legendary game cat, le legendary tales. <laughs> yeah, I, I, lo I love looking into Japanese sales charts because it's like somewhere lesson is like all over the place on the PSVR one oh, charts. No. It hasn't Dude. it hasn't charted on uh, in North America in <laughs> like five years since it came out. <laughs> yeah. Oh um, my goodness. Dude, it, yeah. Legendary tales. I don't know if you've heard about this game. It's First time. Good. No, tell me all about it. <laughs> so it's an action RPG. Oh, I hate you so much sometimes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, Legendary Tales, uh, every single week has been adding a new patch. And uh, this week they have introduced a patch. Um, the, the biggest significance of it is that they're, you know, they've, they've done a bunch of stuff like uh, allowing a seated mode, a crouch button, um, they're sorting for the inventory now. Uh, but the big new hotness is the new Tai Chi. Woo, 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 oh, they finally, actually, they finally uh, fixed that, huh? Yeah, yeah. They fixed the the nice. the hand to hand combat and uh people are loving it. Somebody They're should tell Elbert so he can finally play it. I noticed a lot of people do really like like punching and boxing and stuff in yeah. VR. And it's pretty funny that you know, an action RPG that looks like Souls and uh or structured like a Souls game has the game loop a Diablo game allows you to, you know, experience all the the great physics based melee combat with weapons, axe uh, with like swords and axes and stuff, but then also allows you to uh, do karate. That's mm -hmm. pretty sweet. That is pretty sweet. Uh, it's it's the versatility of VR. No, no, no. It just shows how above and beyond these developers went to like let people play however they wanted to. This is. One of the most open-ended dungeon crawlers I've ever played uh, when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, although <clears throat> that might just be me proving I haven't played that many dungeon crawlers in my life. Um, I've played quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. Too many. I mean, it's definitely better than Might and Magic 3 on Turbo Graphics. Yeah. I was, I was going a little bit uh, later on, like a Dungeon Hunter Alliance. Remember that one? Little PS3? PSN game. I remember Dungeon Hunter Alliance being a Vita game that I played. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't. I didn't play it on the console, but I played everything on the Vita. So when people are like, oh, "Hold on a second, Tornado's here." Let me let me make sure that everybody can. Hey, you want to be on TV? Hey, Tornado. On? Hi. Oh, who's a good girl? Oh, she's so cute, isn't she? So cute. She's so cute. I can't fucking stand it. Cute. Yep. I wouldn't even get out of bed if it wasn't for her. She comes and wakes me up every day. She's like, hey, badass, get out of bed. I'm like, I'm like, dude, no, I don't want to go to school today. And like, all you have to do is play Little Cities. Get out of bed. You're so lazy. I'm like, yeah, that's true. Well, uh, I'm very proud of the community rallying behind this game and supporting it, you know, 
putting their money where their mouth is. We we talked about this before it came out. You know, are people going to buy this game at fifty five dollars, even if it offers fifty five dollars worth of content? Is yep. there just no way of breaking that barrier? And um, I'm really really proud of everybody proving that. Hey, if you if developers out there are listening, if you bring a game that is like really polished and really deep. Um, then people will buy it and support it. It doesn't matter what price it is. And it was a, it was an awesome little uh, experiment to watch unfold. And you know, I hope it just continues to have success here, which is why I, I'm going to keep mentioning it constantly. Yeah, I, 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 I think it's proof that gamers want bigger games, longer games, more in depth games, uh, full length, uh, like games that they'd get on the flat screen with deeper mechanics. Uh, you know, like I, I think we're going to see. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of a lot of VR studios flounder a little bit this generation as they sort of try to find their way because, dude, for seven years, for seven years, games like Job Simulator topped the charts. You know, and Beat Saber still does, so it's not like there's not a market for it, but Beat Saber is one of those yeah. unicorns, right, where it's just ridiculous sales, but not every game is like that. In fact, most games are not like that. Most games developers are like, oh, well, this is what sells. Job Simulator's been on the charts for years. Obviously, this is what kind of game we have to make. And then their game comes out and it's like, no one fucking buys it. You know why? Because we've all got Job Simulator already. We've already played yeah. this stuff, right? We're looking for bigger, fully mm. full-fledged games. And and, and and so thank God for Urban Wolf Games who, 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 who had the balls to basically, you know, uh, work themselves into bankruptcy in order to get a massive game out uh, and prove that this is what gamers want. This, this other stuff's not charting on the PSVR two sales charts, and this has been number one uh, in every <laughs> well in Japan and the U.S. Fucking Forever Bowl. It was number three in the EU. Forever Bowl took number one in EU because it was on sale yeah, for two quid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> that's that's understandable. Um, yeah. But it's. It's great to see it doing so well, and yeah, man. Like, um, shout out to little side shout out to Ultra Wings too, which also got on there. Yeah, um, you just you love to see it, man. You remember every single month there'd be a new release, and and it would just always be Job Simulator, Super Hot, Beat Saber yeah. every single month, and we were just like, what the hell, man? So it's nice that we're, you know, that we've hit the reset button, and now a new game can come out and actually top the charts. Um, I think there's one more hurdle here, though. They need to stay on the top 10 because we have seen some games hit the top 10, if not number one, but then drop off completely. So um, I think, uh, <clears throat> you know, I think if, if Legendary Tales, hopefully it just keeps spreading by word of mouth and there's, you know, whatnot. But also they're in a, a good situation where if they have the ability to to add DLC to it, um, yeah. I guarantee you they will jump right back up to that top. Um, and at some point, if they can sustain that, um, it's got to prove that the even in a smaller niche market, indie games can thrive, can be successful, and uh, can sell headsets. Uh, smoke me all up in the chat, says Brian. You'd be nice to AJ on his show. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right. Thank right. you, smoke me all up. Yeah, I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting who's in charge around here. Son WTF with the five dollar tip says, "Hoping Legendary Tales adds armor modeling for the female avatar." Wife and I crossplay thirty plus hours deep. She's tired of my jiggle harassment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I discovered these jizzle, jiggle fig physics uh, on Saturday as well. I had listen. No I heard. I saw. I heard the word motorboating, and I said, "And I'm out." <laughs> that, that's all I heard was was that you were motoring motorboating some dude uh, who's. <laughs> <laughs> whose avatar was a female and i was like and I, this I, is why i'm not subscribed to aj it was just a quick test of physics and collision detection it was for science it was oh, for, for science gaming, oh, well, programming then, science all means testing testing the with the game capability oh dude the tips have been all fucking gigantic today and i was like what's what's going on and i finally figured out i had I had the fucking window zoomed my sorry my sorry <laughs> My sorry, AJ. My sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, yeah. Oh, dude. But uh, yeah, as far as the uh, as far as the armor modeling for the female avatar, um, it, it sounds like it sounds like they kind of like got the female avatar created like last second, and like almost didn't even include the female avatar in the game. Uh, and so, like, it, it seems like it's an afterthought. But obviously, they're just working. Um, it's cool that they did that though, because I've actually talked to several people that you know their significant other plays and. Uh, 
Yeah, like there's tons of people like literally buying another headset and wow. this game. Somebody said they bought a PS5, a PSVR2, and this game so that they could play with their wife. That is dope. Is everything okay? That's that's the power of uh, adding multiplayer to a game like this too. You don't you don't just sell one copy. You potentially sell like multiple be- just from one purchase alone because people want to play with their friends, their significant others. Yeah, you know whoever. Um, yep. It's it's a it's it's the perfect recipe for something like this. Yeah, I'm I'm glad they got the female avatar in, but yeah, it is definitely it is definitely time for some uh, for for the armor modeling so that uh, so that they can be equal. In all ways. Macho, 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 the real estate procrastinating game cat with the $5 tip says three bloody knuckles and one swollen hand later. Listen, be- before before I continue on with Macho's tip, what the fuck are you guys doing out there? <laughs> like, I have the smallest play space in the world, and every so often <laughs> I punch like the edge of my bed, I nick the corner of my TV, something, right? <laughs> Macho's out there with blood pouring down his hand, posting pictures on Discord. What are you guys doing out there? He's go- he goes hard, man. Yeah. He goes really he goes <laughs> right. hard with VR. <laughs> so three bloody I used knuckles. To be like that. Yeah. I-, I used to do that too. Uh, you know what game taught me to like. Okay, you you can the, finesse this a little the bit. The game like of life of getting old and uh, being like, I don't, yeah, I don't uh, want to sweat in my uh, headset anymore. <laughs> I'm just gonna yeah, swing swords yeah. like this from now on. <laughs> yeah, I have that tendency as well to like swing really hard at first. Um, mm-hmm. But Sprint Vector, I oh. learned a valuable lesson after playing Sprint Vector for seven hours straight, obtaining the platinum. Um, Touche. I learned a, a valuable lesson about the the aftermath and the pain that can come from swinging too hard and whatnot um sometimes you just gotta learn the hard way but (laughs) yeah be careful out there just remember all these games they're not designed to to be like full strength um they're they're designed to be you know use your wrist to flip like flick your wrists and use whatever little tricks you can um techno glitch says what game is this uh, i think we've been talking about legendary tales for quite a while now so just yeah in case you just joined legendary tales number one baby congrats dude I get so nervous sometimes, you know, like when I'm playing a game and I'm like, you know, when I, I remember first jumping in like pre-release and being like, wow, this fucking looks really good. 90 native, like great texture resolution. Everything is like, this This looks really good. And then the more I'm playing, I'm like, wait, this feels really good too. Like this game just feels great to play. And so, you know, you get, you get, are getting nervous being like, am I, do I like this game? It, like, am I enjoying this more than I should? Like, is this is this speaking to me in some way that's not going to speak to other people? And when you review games, I think you have to kind of get in that headspace and say, when I review this, am I reviewing this for me or for everyone else? And uh, and I just kind of reviewed it for me. And I'm so happy that my story is so similar uh, to everybody else's. Everybody else's story ended up being so similar to mine. I think I've seen like two comments one on Twitter and then one in the YouTube comments being like, I hate this game. I wish I get my $50 back. And that's really good, dude. That's really good for a game with like, that's this deep mechanically. Uh, and, and it looks like from the outset seems like it's very repetitive, right? So, uh, so that's actually good for a, a fairly niche genre to only have, to have that few complaints. I, I sorry, I didn't actually finish Macho's tip. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> no, my bad. I stopped in the middle of it. He said three bloody knuckles, one swollen hand later, and Legendary Tales is my favorite PSVR 2 game yet, which is amazing. Me too. Everyone buy it. It's a must-have. It's my daily full-body workout. Holy crap. And and, and obviously, source of injury. <laughs> uh, Macho <laughs> follows it up with another $2. says, oh, no, AJ, this one is. It will do what you do. He's showing you up, man. Telling you. Telling you. Put everything into it, you get everything back. I mean, you kind of do. Okay. You kind of do. Uh, AJ, it's not all unicorns and rainbows this week, though I do love unicorns and rainbows. Big fan. I like dragons more. Dargons? Okay. Dargons. Yeah. Uh, Madison got delayed a week. Uh, how much do you care? It went from the 20, what, 23rd to the 29th? I believe I, it's great. Um, <laughs> yeah, for real. It's, it's it's amazing news because we're going to be at PAX East together and with this lovely community and with some developers and with whatever places we end up at PAX. Um, yeah, we're going to be at Boston during that time. So this couldn't have been a better time 
uh, for this game to get delayed. And it's already been delayed like 800 times. So right. what's another week? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, like they had hinted last year this was coming out on Halloween. Uh, right. Like, that, that's kind of a sucky time for it to sure, come that out. that was the plan. Yeah. Uh, and then here we are. Let's see. November 1st, December, January, February, March, over four and a half months later. Um we finally get a solid release date. I, I'm with you, AJ. We're going to be at PAX, uh, and it would have been very difficult to have a review out ahead of time. So I'm glad it got delayed. Does this give you any cause for alarm? Like this, this sort of has a vertigo vibe going on right now. It's 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 perp again. It, the the release date for Vertigo was very much like in flux. It seemed like at all times they just kept saying, "Oh, we found another bug. We found this game breaking. This trying to fix this." Um, does, does this give you any cause for alarm, or are you feeling like this is going to be all right? I mean, no more than you know. I'm I'm already approaching this game. This is one of my more highly anticipated games. This is the first horror game I've been excited about pretty much since Resident Evil Four, since Halloween. Um, since propagation. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, I'm basically always going to have these concerns over these games with these releases, but, um, we've noticed a trend where games are starting to release more and more with eye track foveated rendering. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, legendary tales has it. Uh, I think, uh, cube announced on their, uh, Twitter, or they they said like on their trailer or whatever, the, the info page yeah. that that's going to have eye track foveated rendering. So, what's happening now is kind of what we've been hoping would happen, which is like people have had the dev kits longer. They're delaying their releases. They're making sure that they release a better product, like the best product that it could be. Yep. Um, and, and I, and I don't, you know, um, I think that's the right thing to the right way to go because your launch, the launch of a game is the most important time for, for a game. Uh, that is, the most, unless like not everybody's going to pull a, a Hello Games with No Man's Sky. That is extremely rare. Um, and the launch is extremely important. So you want it to be, have all the hype, all the excitement at launch, because otherwise you just basically, you're wasting all of the time you spent getting the game to this point. Uh, you're wasting it on nothing. You're going to, you're going to kill your sales. You're going to kill any hype you had for it, any excitement. Um, and, and it doesn't do any good to end for anybody. Yeah. There was a, um, uh, Colin Moriarty recently did an interview with Jonathan blow. Uh, if you guys are familiar with Jonathan blow, did braid and the witness, uh, both did fucking insane sales for indie games. Uh, and that's been like seven, he does like seven years between games, uh, it, a totally different topic. But, um, one of the things Colin shared during that, cause you guys know that Colin, uh, kind of heads up a kind of indie studio, makes some smaller games. And so uh, he had he had an issue with PlayStation being like, okay, the game came out, uh, but it wasn't like, uh, there was some issue with the date or whatever. Um, and by the time PlayStation got it fixed, it was like a week later. And so it shows up on the store, but it's no longer top on the new games list, right? And so... Uh, and he and he said that that absolutely affected their sales. Like it's it's just a discover discoverability problem, right? A lot of people go on to the PlayStation Store. I don't think I don't think everyone realizes this. A lot of us go on to the PlayStation Store looking for specific games. We're like, oh, Brian just reviewed Little Cities. I'm going to go buy that, right? And uh, and so they go on the PlayStation Store and they search for Little Cities specifically. A lot of people go on the PlayStation Store and they're not like fully researching these things. They are just saying, oh, I wonder what's new on PlayStation VR two this week. Somebody should make a a show that tells people what's new on PSVR 2 this week. But, you know, until that happens, you just have to go on the PlayStation Store and sort sort by newest to oldest. And so you lose out on day one sales. Uh, you're fucked, right? Because if some of these games come out and they get bad reviews because of bugs or or glitches or, or visual problems or resolution or frame rates, by the time all that shit gets fixed, they are so low on the, on the release for the store that they're just they're not going to get that second chance to make a first impression. They're not going to get that relaunch day where it's back up on top of the store mm. again. Hey, everything's fixed now. It's like fucking kind of too late. Too late. The word is already out that your game sucks. And so and yeah. with and with a user base as small as PSVR2, every fucking sale counts. So this is something that people need right. to learn now. Well, right I think now. they're starting to. I think they're starting to and I think that's why they're why they're seeing that. Um 
I'll tell you something interesting. I retweeted uh, Perp Games' tweet about Madison VR being delayed, and it was liked by VR Monkey. So I think VR Monkey is doing the port. And oh, maybe I'm hoping that with their experience now, you know, they've come a long way with and they've they've started to understand the tech a lot better and how to get the most out of it. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's like some bugs here and there, you know, potentially even game breaking ones or something as, as, as much as that sucks to say. I'm sure there's going to be some bugs somewhere in the game. It's almost, you know, it's almost impossible these days uh, to have a completely bug free game. Um, but I'm hoping that with all of their experience now, all their knowledge they gained from, you know, turning around Galaxy Cart and what they did with that, they used eye tracking and things like that. No, kind of understanding what the player base wants, what the gamers want out of a out of a game, that this means there's a more likely chance that it's going to be, you know, a, a more quality product. Yeah. Uh, we have always lived in the Castle Mary Cat. Uh, in the chat says, looking for PSVR 2 titles in the Sony store online uh, is like a horrible mini game in itself, uh, which I absolutely agree with. Uh, Mecha Party came out, like Stealth dropped. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. Like some, some PSVR 2 game that I'm not even familiar with came out of nowhere, Stealth dropped on the store. Uh, and, and, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks for letting me know all the game cats on our Discord. Because I, because guess who wouldn't have found that on their own? This guy. Because I go to the store and I search by new, and guess what's not there? Mecha Party, or whatever yeah. it's called. And um, it, it, it's not even listed under the PSVR 2 section in the store. I think it is, but it's, it's, if you sort by new releases, it's still all the way at the bottom. It makes no sense. Like it, <laughs> It's really weird. Right. Um, so, so, yeah. so any any day one sales they were going to get just from people who were curious about it uh, are already gone. Thank, thanks, Sony. Well done, as always. Well, I don't know how much of that is on Sony, but what do you, <laughs> it's their store, dude. The thing is, is that Sony takes thirty percent of every sale. It is, and and and, and it's like people get nothing in return for that thirty percent that they give Sony. They get nothing. They don't. There's no discoverability on the PlayStation Store. the The PlayStation Store is an absolute shit show when you're trying to find shit. Uh, stuff disappears. It reappears. It's an absolute fucking mess. And I think Sony should be fucking embarrassed taking money from all these indie devs and doing nothing for them. In fact, making it harder for them to sell their games. I think it's an embarrassment. And like, if, if they're taking so much fucking money, and it's all automated. You know, you talk to certain developers and they're like, oh, the reason that Ultra Wings 2 stealth dropped on the store, unbeknownst to developers, is because everything's automated on the PlayStation Store. And they had like one thing wrong in the wrong place. It's like, how about somebody works there? How about somebody working there to make sure this automated nonsense doesn't happen and that new games are showing up where they're supposed to? You're getting money for this. Pay somebody to make sure that that money is well spent or well deserved. It's not well deserved. Like... I don't know, man. I'm sorry. Like, I, I just think that I think that Sony's re really fucking up the store big time. It, I go to I go to the Steam store to find out information about PSVR two games because it's easier to navigate and there's way more information there, like all in black and white. And the Steam store is not great, but it's infinitely better. You type in five letters of a game, a drop down menu appears and said one of these games. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's it. Most of the time I go to the PlayStation Store, I type in a full name of a game. Nothing shows up in, in the return except for like indie games from five years ago with similar names, but not the actual game I'm looking for. You're taking 30% of these hardworking people's pay and giving nothing in return. In fact, making it harder for people to find your games. It's fucking nonsense. Do better. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I think it's just, I'm just, I, I guess I'm just kind of used to it by this point. Like, I, I think in the yeah. the 20 years or something that they've had PlayStation Network, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say they like it. So it's like nothing has changed. It's like, it's, it's, all, it's always something different. To me, I think the store has actually improved quite a bit, but I totally understand that there are still some, you know, there's major room for improvement though. right the fact that it's better than it once was is insane the ps3 generation was i mean like just wiser even a store um we got some it didn't tips. even run it couldn't even run the store oh god it, it was, was like so choppy remember at the beginning when it was just fucking like browser based 
<laughs> like that's all. It, uh, I mean, whew, yeah, it's it's yeah. so much better now, and it's still terrible. Uh, Markio, the sleepless night underground game cat. It's Elite a, name squad in the house. Oh yeah, it all gets cut off from me with the, with the Canadian two dollars. Says, <laughs> "Welcome back to AJ's Legendary Tales Corner." Uh, listen, you can have Legendary Tales Corner, but I'm bringing back Galaxy Cart Corner. All right. You can have your thing. I'll have my thing. I like, yeah, that's fine. My corner is way better. <laughs> oh, I mean, I, I agree with you, but don't sleep on Galaxy Card. That's just fun. I'm going to reread it. I do need to jump back into Galaxy Card. After all this this time that they've uh, been improving it. Um, so many I, new tracks, dude. They just, they're just like shitting these things out. And they're all surprisingly good. That's the surprising part is that they're really good tracks. That's cool. I'm, I will uh, jump back into that at some point because I do want, you know, that vibe. Yeah, um, I'm a, yeah I'm gonna re-review that game because I think I gave it like a three point five, and now it's I don't know like even even with a few bugs and shit like I mean it's so much fun. There's so much more content now that like it really is the best the best we've got. And, and honestly, I think the best kart racer we've ever gotten in VR uh, we've ever pure, gotten like like pure kart racer for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean like like if we get if we had gotten dash dash, it might be close. Uh, but we never got dash dash. And so this is it, man. This is it. Like this is a solid high seven, low eight, something around there. It's just, it's just cause it's just, it's so much fun to play with your friends. Like it's one of those games where you laugh the whole time. Um, and just talk shit with your friends. It's so much fun. I've enjoyed this to be fair. I've enjoyed this. I think more than I did dash dash. I think I enjoyed even, the sense of like, speed. Yeah. Like it really feels like you're there. Dash dash had something weird going on where like it, I didn't see and it. And it was maybe because I was playing on quest two, but I didn't feel like the depth so much and, and so like it didn't i didn't really feel like i was racing a car physics like the physics the feel of it yeah you know it just i don't know um i i do i do love the uh i do love using my racing rig too one hand on the wheel one hand uh for you know for weapons um it's really good uh ho hopefully they'll uh hopefully they'll get some official force feedback in at okay. some point but the, the generic force feedback they have in the logitech g29 I think that's good enough, man. Like I've raced go karts, you know, places, and it feels like that's what it feels like. It fe that it feels resistance good. feels like a go kart. I haven't done yeah. the Thrustmaster, so if people have problems with the Thrustmaster one, please let us know in the chat. I just don't know. Yeah, Sorry I don't. My end. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember. I think when I tried it, there wasn't a lot of force feedback, or if at all. Um, so, I, did you say that's been updated? Now there is supposed to be. There's definitely force feedback. I mean, or there's. Uh, let me say it this way: there's resistance. Mm -hmm. force feedback makes okay. you know is certainly a different thing uh but there's resistance on the wheel more sirens on my end that make it feel like hey this is this is how difficult it is to turn a uh, a go-kart wheel in real life okay um, so brian how about you madison vr hype friends have xbox with the canadian 14 dollars says as someone who played all of madison back in 2022 i found as it went on jump scares just got cheaper while puzzles got more nonsensical and frustrating. Wonder what you guys will think though. Um, I also wonder what I'll think. Cause I only played the first hour uh, just to kind of check it out and see what the vibe was. And I loved it, man. I think if they can capture the visuals in VR, right? Make it similar to the PlayStation five version, the flat screen version. It's, you know, it's, it's going to be that whole, um, the, whole, the feeling I got from Paranormal Activity, where I was terrified because everything looks so realistic. You know, yeah. back when I played Paranormal Activity, I was like, this is as close as we've gotten to photorealistic graphics. And, you know, it's a pretty bare bones house, but what was there was really well done. And I feel like if they can if they can capture that in Madison, then I'll, I'll, I'll be fucking terrified the whole time just because I'm scared because it seems so realistic. Yeah, graphics are not supposed to be like the most important thing, but with VR, they kind of are a little bit more important because that yep. really can affect your immersion. And um, obviously you want everything to be as immersive as possible. So I think, I do think graphics are held to a little bit of a higher standard in VR um, than normal. I mean, it's something that everybody likes anyways, just because of like eye candy and, you know, you want a game to look nice and be pleasant to look at mm -hmm. visual candy. But um, I think it actually functions as a, an important part of the immersion um for for vr games so yeah i'm i'm hoping yeah that's what i mean kind of made resident evil 7 so damn scary was like it was just such a realistic setting and everything and yeah this has that realism kind of look to it so yeah 
It looks good. It I'll, should be pretty scary. For for me, I think you know, like definitely realism. Realism helps in VR, but also when I play something like Stilt, you know, when you when you have high resolution, super high frame rate, there are these reprojections not distracting you, blurs not distracting right. you. There, there are these there are these things like it can be a cartoony world, but I can be immersed if the resolution and frame rate is high enough. Um, yeah, but yeah, I'm not. You know, I the the art design and stuff could be a little bit more unique and still, but man, I love that. It looks like, like a super high res, uh, Nintendo 64 game. I love that. <laughs> yeah. This definitely has that look. Looper the underground game cat with the two euros says PS prices is more reliable at tracking new releases. PS prices is a great website. Yeah. I use it all the time. If you don't use it, you should definitely use it. Uh, but I agree. Twitter Same with PSN profiles. <laughs> Biker game cat from Mars with the five quid says just finished propagation literally 10 minutes ago. When the next one, when's the next one? That cliffhanger was insane. Thanks for recommending lads. Um, it doesn't sound like they're working on part two. Yeah, Currently. they're working on, they've, they've got another game in the works though. And it sounds like, I don't know if they've directly said or anything, but it, seems like it, it could, likely is going to hit PSVR 2. Um, it's a completely different direction, though. It's some. It's a completely randomly different style game. Um, I'd, I'd imagine, especially if Propagation sells okay, um, I'd imagine they'd probably pursue a sequel. It just might take some more time. Yeah, I mean, I think Propagation was a pretty big hit on PSVR 2. It was a pretty big hit on uh, on Quest. Probably PC. I don't know. Uh, Quest? Yeah. You heard it. You heard of that? Mm -mm. No. Propagation Paradise. Oh wait, yeah, on on like standalone. No, I didn't. I didn't know it was on standalone. Yeah, yeah, came out came out first on Quest, and that's how. Um, um <clears throat> and uh, and that's how we knew so much about it. You know, basically, Wes had been telling us it's more Resident Evil than Saints and Sinners, and and he was fucking right about that shit. So, dude, Propagation Paradise Hotel, definitely big shout out to that game. It's yep. so good. Definitely hope that that team is able to expand and start really start, um, you know, maybe working on multiple projects at once because they they obviously have a lot of uh, a lot of great ideas. I know, I know that I wasn't a big fan of the uh, their rhythm game there, Ragnarok, but a lot of people are. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess that's why I'm surprised that, that Propagation's on Quest because it's it's very enhanced. Like it seems like a PC VR slash PSVR yeah. two game. Yeah, I mean, um, so many so many developers when they make their PSVR two version say this is the best looking version of the game that is available because right. just because of what's available with eye tracking, um, so it makes sense. Uh, AJ, let's move on to uh, the main topic of the day because I don't want this show to go on uh, until the wee hours of it's still <laughs> bright out there. The evening <laughs> uh, it looks like a pretty sky though. It is. Uh, if I had some kind of remote control for this thing, I would have it open up right now, and it would be beautiful out there. Um, because this is when the show's supposed to be starting, AJ. This is the normal skyline. Yeah, fucking crazy. Yep. Um, yeah, let's talk a little bit about Little Cities. Embargo lifted today. The game comes out tomorrow. Uh, AJ, uh, my, I am going to have a review out for this thing, I believe, tomorrow. Um, but uh, as we as we get into the discussion about little cities uh I, I will explain to you why there's no coverage of it yet on the channel uh but let's start from the top aj uh what what were your thoughts on little cities so far um my thoughts on little cities initially um was that I have zero interest in this game um, because <laughs> I to don't a good start. like these types of games typically. Um, but I will say, having been forced to play through it, um, I'm actually kind of enjoying some of it. Like I, I, I think it's a, I think it's a decent game uh, from what I've played so far. I've only played a couple hours, so these are this is more of a first impressions uh, for me. Um, I think I've played about two hours of it so far. And yeah, I typically have zero interest in these kinds of games. I don't care. Um, <clears throat> the last one we got was Cities VR. I hated that game. Like, I thought it was god-awful. Yep. This, I kind of, like, dreaded having to play it. I didn't want to, but I forced myself to so that we could talk about it and review. And uh, yeah, I found myself, the more and more I started playing this game, I was like, okay, like, this is, I can see the appeal here. I, I see... 
I'm kind of having fun, um, you know, trying to utilize this limited uh, space to to build the biggest, most crammed city as possible. Make sure it has power supplies and um, and uh, water supplies and you know all these things that are you're supposed to kind of balance within a city to make a functional city happen. And I think it's it's got really intuitive controls. Everything is easy to do, and I think that has helped me enjoy this game more it's like it's very easy to do everything and so you really just have to focus on what you have to do versus like trying to do those things yeah um i i I mean i'm in the same boat as you when it comes to uh cities vr did not enjoy playing that i i I was gonna play it for review and i just couldn't do it man like I, i i hated the interface i hated the ui it didn't feel like it was designed for vr even though it was. Uh, and so one of the first things that I focused on when I jumped into Little Cities Bigger, Little Cities Bigger, again, being the definitive version, the ultimate version of this game with all the DLC that's come out on other platforms and uh, the highest resolution and frame rate. Um, this is, uh, I, I was focused on the UI and I was like, how I, this is the thing I'm going to be using more often than not uh, in this game. How is it going to feel to build shit? And man, it feels really good. It feels really good. It has this like little bubble system where you just you you just kind of poking at things, and you know you have a laser pointer, so you don't even have to reach out far. Um, and so selecting what you want to build, and uh, you know if you're if you're creating roads, you can just select roads and then literally drag and drop them across the ground, and it and it just feels good. Um, and you have this status screen that I'm showing on the screen right now. If you lift up your watch on your left hand, like it just gives you all the information about your city all in one little concise menu. It tells you what your city needs, uh, what you know, if there's any issues going on that you need to fix. It's There's a lot of stuff happening at once, uh, but Little Cities Bigger kind of simplifies it to the point where you don't really feel overwhelmed. It introduces things really slowly, but it all, that means it's also unlocking things at a fairly regular uh, interval. Sorry, you start off and you only can do so many things. And then as you progress, as your city gets bigger, you unlock this, you unlock that. Now you can do this. Now you can do that. Oh, don't forget this. Now you need a cell tower because your city needs reception. It's like, okay, cool. Wi-Fi. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Yeah. I think like, I, exactly. The, the controls I think are very intuitive and well, I think it's a really well crafted game. Now, graphically, it does leave a little bit to be desired. Like, I think, I think it's got, you know, it's got like a lot of stuff going on with it. Um, but it does like some of the buildings and whatnot, they do look very questy. Um, like very, it does, it does look very much like a quest game in, in many ways. Um, it's definitely not enhanced. And, and the only drawback to that is like when you want to zoom in really close, it's like, you know, there's, what what's cool about the uh, the to me what's cool about the thought of some of these games is you know getting your city running you have all these people running around and socializing and doing these things and then going whoop and then zooming in and like being immersed in this world that you've created or in the city that you've created and um i haven't really had uh much interest in that but i i i am enjoying the game loop of it um the, the, it is kind of like a puzzle, like it is kind of like puzzle solving, um, you know, because there's a lot of things you have to take into account when building your city. Um, things can affect uh, one way, you know, first of all, you have to have like, like a certain amount of residents, um, uh, commercial areas, and then like factories. And then you you can't like put them next to each other because otherwise like the residents will be really unhappy that they're like being poisoned by the factory or whatever. Right. Um, so you do have to like, you know, you have to spread things out. You got to balance it properly. And then there's ways that you can enhance it, like adding like a little park next to some place where people live. And, and it makes like, you know, they give you some bonus points for like, you know, uh, either their home, their living situation is happier or like the, the, the commercial areas are, they get some bonus points for having some like, you know, stuff to view around there as well so i think it's a i think it's a really well crafted game so far i think it's a well crafted game too um now it's it's funny because i feel like i'm doing something wrong when i play because like i was saying you you're unlocking different 
items at different intervals. You're unlocking more parts of each island that you can build on as your city grows and hits different milestones. The problem is, is that you will get to a point where every single bit of land that you have available to you is full. You've, you've, right. you've, you've marked down industrial zones and commercial zones and residential zones. You got your streets all figured out. You've got, you know, you've, you've got to make sure that everybody, there's a police station uh, for, for, you know, that, that covers an, uh, enough of the ground where like everybody's, everybody's protected by fires. You got fire stations. There's so much going on. And you kind of like put the puzzle together as you go and as these things become available to you. And then you just, every island I've worked on so far, I've hit a stopping point where there's more to the island that hasn't unlocked yet because my city hasn't grown big enough to unlock that. You have to level up to like level five or six usually. Like you have to level up the the limited area you have. There's so multiple like, zones. And so, yeah, you fun, do it multiple to times. A new zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and so frequently I'm sitting there going, what, what more can I do? How can I make this even better than it is? And so I've got about six hours in this game so far. And I, that's happened to me three times where I just hit a stopping point and go, oh, I'm no longer progressing. I'm no longer leveling the city up. Uh, there's plenty of unused areas that haven't unlocked yet. How can I make this place even better? And so what starts as this super cozy game where it's just like, oh yeah, kind of do whatever you want. And like, you know, we're going to tell you, sort of tell you what the city needs as it goes along and it's not challenging, not, you know, there's certainly not a, um, like a high difficulty curve right. until, until like you just hit this roadblock where you go, I don't know what I'm fucking supposed to do next. So that's happened to me <clears throat> three times on three different islands. And so there's a part of me that's like, well, I'm not ready to review this game because either I'm missing something or there's something fundamentally a little bit broken about the progression in this game. And I'm betting it's more me not understanding what my city needs. But 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 at the same time, it's like it, it seems very strange to me that it's so kind of like, oh, just do whatever you want until it's like, nope, now you've got to fucking switch things up and make minute changes to satisfy what the game is looking for. For you to be able to progress, and 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 that's when I start going, man. I'm just just not interested, not nearly as interested as I was an hour ago when I was making progress. Um, I also don't like how that these islands are so small, man. Sim City used to have this giant map, right? And you could just build yeah. this major metropolis, and it was crazy seeing it, you know, go from this little town to this big city. And and this is th these islands feel very, very cramped and limited. Well, I think that's part of the puzzle element of it yeah. is figuring out. Because everything that you build basically has to be connected to a road. Right. Um, Does your and, power lines so, basically like? Yeah, and so I think that's part of the puzzle element of it is because I did this happened to me on the second island, by the way, um, where I I completely ran out of space. I used up everything, and then I realized, oh, like I'm maxed out. I have to redo some stuff, or I have to yeah, like I have to basically scrap part of my island and then rebuild it um, so that there's more roads, so that there's more places to put buildings and, and things like that. Like you have to figure out how to optimize it in this compact space. Right. Um, and to me, that doesn't really bother me um, because it, to me, that's part of the gameplay. That's part of the puzzle element of figuring that out and, and, and um, you know, utilizing this space to, jam pack the most like make it the most efficient within this limited space um for me what i'm wondering about is like you you've played six hours now yep um so i've I'm, only played about two. so i'm bouncing around between four different islands simultaneously now right because after you beat the first island it unlocks another three right right um and then you get to kind of work on those there's like a desert one a snowy one and they do have like they're kind of different themed little decorations for each, yeah. um, which and is it, nice. And, and it does mix up the gameplay a little bit. The desert ones have like uh, sandstorms that you have to like plant trees in order to make, you know, make, make those areas um, habitable. Is that a word? Yeah. Yeah. Habitable. Yeah. Ha ha habitable. I'm going to go with habitable. habitable. <laughs> in the chat, sounds off. <laughs> habitable or habitable? Habitable, habitable. sounds ridiculous. In, in, inhabitable. 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 Yeah. 
I, I take it back. I don't want to have this conversation. <laughs> Habula. <laughs> um, Habula Abu right. um, and, and I And I did see Twitcher in the chat saying you have to keep an eye on, on your city's needs at all times that there's things. It's, yeah. And that's, and that's the problem is that like this, I feel like I understand the game. Like I really do. Like I'm, 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 I'm giving the city, uh, the people in the city, exactly what they're looking for. I'm making sure that they have plenty of water and a, and that everything is taken care of. And that's why, like, when I hit these roadblocks, it's not. It wouldn't be an issue if it was like 20 minutes of being like, okay, let me rearrange this or destroy some buildings and re restructure this. It's an hour of me being like, I don't know what I'm fucking supposed to do. Like, it just yeah. it, it feels very strange uh, that the 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 it feels like two very different types of games um, that, that you don't know you're transitioning from one to the other. And it's cozy, inhospitable says Ace Gamer. That's maybe the word I was looking for. <laughs> Scott has got the VR, PSVR game cap for life says niche. Agreed. Agreed. So to me, what what's going to make or break this game for me is kind of the depth. And I am happy to hear that, you know, like you said, you go to the stand, sandstorm or you go to the desert place and there are like sandstorms. Like how much can you interact with the environment or how interactive is the environment and how much does it affect your city and, and what you have to plan for it. And yeah, as you go to these different places, you are unlocking new, new things. There's also like special events. Um, what do they call them? Uh, the, uh, the place like, like the special pieces for like um, sightseeing and stuff. Sure. Uh, yeah. There's I, like amusement parks and there's uh, aquariums yeah, right. and that right. kind of stuff. There's, yeah. There's special. Yeah. There's special buildings like that. And then there's like smaller ones too, like just little parks and swings. Oh, like and, attractions. And like uh, attractions. Yeah. That's the word I was looking for. Um, yeah. And that's, and the, so those give you style points. You have up, up, uh, up to five right. stars that you can get for style points and, and putting, you know, play playgrounds next to residential areas gives you bonus right. points and putting the donut shop next to uh, the police station gives you like 30 bonus points. Like there, <laughs> there are some like things you find out like that just by kind of fucking around and experimenting. Yeah. To me. So obviously this game is inspired by several other games and that's, that's, this is my big curiosity about this surrounding this. Because I'm not into these types of games. I'm not into the like Sim City or Civilization or like I've played them a little bit, but mm -hmm. but like not much. They're not typically my type of game. But to me, the sign of a good game has always been one that, hey, even if it's not something you like, you can still enjoy it. And that's kind of how I've felt about this so far, unlike the other one, Cities VR. Um, I feel like even though this is totally not for me. Or whatnot like i'm it's like i don't hate it <laughs> like i like i i think it's it does some nice things but i am curious about you know those people that do like this kind of game like are they going to like are they going to like this for what it is or are they going to be like well because i've played x y and z that had all these features that had all these this depth to it and certain mechanics like is this game gonna feel like it's lacking in those um like because it's more built for vr it's 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 an interesting it's a very like it's a niche with it's a niche within a niche kind of thing um so it's it'll be interesting to see like how many people are interested in this how many people you know enjoy it and how they feel if they have experience playing the flat screen styles of these games um like, like, what does this offer other than just being in VR? And is it like a watered down version of those? Or is it actually like, you know, enough? Like, does it have enough uh, to satisfy those people? Yeah. Um, somebody asked if we played the Volcano Island. And I'm sorry that I, I didn't see who it was. I think it was Looper that was asking, but I could be wrong. Um, Yes, Looper, the Underground Gamecast says, have you played the Volcano Island? I have. And within like 20 minutes of starting that island up, that volcano blew and uh, and, and spouted fire down, rain fire down on a lot of my shit. And uh, it's- That's cool. I like that. It's, like very, that. it's very different from SimCity, and I'm assuming uh, Cities VR that way, because- you know, everything's on fire and I'm just like, whatever. Like I've got fire, sta fire stations, like they'll take care of it. Like- it's fine. You know, if something burns down, if something burns down and, uh, and you just left with a vacant lot, then you just rebuild it. You just redesignated it as an industrial zone or whatever it was. And then you're, you're done. And I remember SimCity always being, there was always a money problem, right? Everyone had the cheat code, uh, to, for the SNES version to start with like, uh, like a million dollars or something. But the, 
the gameplay of those games was sort of always about like it was a little bit more in depth, and I'm guessing that's how cities is. Uh, and and so money's always a problem. I money's never been a problem in this game for me. Never. Like, to, uh, you can for the most part, like you might have to wait a minute or two. Uh, you know, if you're buying something major like an airport or something, but money's really not an issue. Like I've just got like hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, of disposable income uh, when I'm, when I'm playing this. And so at least where I'm at right now, money seems pretty inconsequential. It's, it's probably just your play style because I've, I have, it hasn't become like a, like a, like a wall that I've hit, but I've definitely been trying to do some things where it's like, Oh, I can't, I don't have enough funds yet. Um, so you know, I don't know if it's because like you're just building more commercial areas or what it is, but there's there's a balance to it, um, for sure. Uh, and what was I? Uh, there was something else I was going to say. The closest thing that I've played to this so far is what's the medieval game? Sirens of Townsman. Land. Townsman. Townsman. VR, yeah. VR. That's the closest thing I've played to this. And Townsman. I mean. That had me hooked for like ten hours, uh, until I got kind of bored of it. Like, like it was really fun. I really enjoyed it. But after ten hours of doing that, and the way they, the way they kept me going with that was they did mix in a couple different style levels, and then, and then like they also just kept adding like like the depth of the building and the crafting just goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. But it almost got to the point to where it's like okay, like this is just getting a little ridiculous now. So I am also curious to see about, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to, you know, play some more of this when I, when I get a chance and, and dive, you know, dive a little bit deeper. Like I said, despite this being a game, a, a genre that I could care absolutely less about, um, I, uh, or couldn't care less about, I, I've, I've been, I've, I've, I think it's okay. Like I, and I'm, and I'm, wanting i'm a little curious to kind of dive a little bit deeper spend a couple more hours with it at least and yep. and see if d d at what point does it get repetitive like you know does it just start to get re really repetitive and and boring and tedious or do they introduce enough to keep it fresh and keep it fun yeah i will i will say it's you know again very very i think good for a cozy game if you're not looking for a lot of challenge and you just like want to hang out and sort of yeah. enjoy the you know enjoy slowly building and fucking around um i i think i think all of that is pretty cool and um you know and and, and i guess it's it's kind of fun just to sort of observe your city a little bit and see what's going on you know like sometimes you see people hanging out in their backyards there's like you know kids doing kickflips and shit on a, in the skate park right and so yeah. it, it, as aj said you get down to the ground level and it becomes very questy and like everything's super low poly but you know and you can't really get down to ground level either somebody was asking if you can be like kind of first person on the street and you can't you get pretty damn close but uh you're there's still little touches oh sorry you yeah, know go ahead i was just gonna say there's little touches that are that are kind of nice too like when you it, like you said the, the cozy it's got some cozy features to it and i i like the, some of the little touches like when you successfully do something or level up like there's like the whole town like cheers they're like yay and like there's like balloons and and there's you know hot air balloons flying by your head there's planes flying around and yeah. there's whales in the ocean and and like some of the stuff you know there's just enough like I, I do wish there was a little bit more of all that going on like a little bit more chaos and and everything um but there but it, there's some nice little touches like that 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 make you feel that make you feel kind of rewarding and um, I do like that when you like build the houses, you see people like chilling in the backyard, like drinking, talking and stuff like it's, it's kind of cool. Yeah. And I mean, as far as little touches go, like the very first, I didn't see an airplane the first time I saw an airplane, I felt it because my headset started to rumble and I was like, what's yeah. my headset rumbling for? And I looked around and like, there's a plane kind of flying right by my head. And I was like, oh, it's like, yeah, a little touch. They need to turn that down a little bit. That headset rumbles a little bit too intense yeah. and uncomfortable for. Uh, see, uh, I liked it. I like the I, I like the the sweet spot, and I think I think you can overdo the headset rumble, and I think the headset was it was a little annoying to me. Well, then stop putting your head in the clouds with all the fucking planes. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> like that's their space, not yours. 
<laughs> no, um, yeah, help it. My head's just so big. <laughs> I'm gonna sp- I'm gonna spend a few more hours with this game tonight. Like I said, like I I you know as as somebody who suffers immensely from imposter syndrome, um, I I always question myself before you know when reviewing a game. Like, have I spent enough time with it? You know, nine out of ten times I've beaten the game, and so and with this, I I don't know if I'm going to finish it before reviewing it. Um, but I will have a review out tomorrow. I'll spend as much time as I need tonight to to feel as though. Uh, I can, I can review it properly and hopefully, and, and again, hopefully figure out some of these like little puzzled issues that I'm having because it just felt weird. You know, I, I was like, does it want me to work on some style points? Does it want, what, what does it want me to do right now? Cause it's so, it holds your hand until it just stops holding your hand. And you're like, what am I supposed to do now? Like you've been yeah. holding my hand this whole time. Now, now what? So, uh, I, I will, I will figure that out. I will figure out if it's me or the game and, uh, and then expect a review tomorrow. But, uh, but when so, I hit the wall, is it 20 bucks? I, Do you know? I don't know how much it is. Let me see if I have a press kit somewhere. Yeah. I, when, when I hit the wall, I realized that, yeah, like I was kind of just casually place, placing stuff down. Um, and then I realized like, oh, like I had so right. much empty space and so much more space that I could be using. And so, yeah, that's, that's when I kind of hit the wall and realized like, oh, yeah. there is kind of like a, you gotta be efficient with this yeah and the, the, you know the graphs very clearly show saying hey like you know what's needed right now more industrial zones it's like okay well you know what i'll tear down some commercial districts to put up some industrial zones uh if that's if that's what the city needs and so you know it's you do have to pay attention and uh and, and kind of keep that in mind as you're building or yeah you will be tearing stuff down later uh but again like i got over a lot of those hurdles and then ended up with some seemingly impossible hurdles and that that's, that's the confusion part. Um, but I'll figure it out. And again, I will, uh, I will not sleep tonight until that review is written and then spend all day editing tomorrow. <laughs> uh, AJ, before we get over to 20 questions, we've got uh, a couple more tips here. Uh, I, uh, Holy shit. Do, do we, we didn't do biker game cap from Mars. Is that how far back we are? I don't know. I think he did his, we did that one. Did we do the violator violator game cap metal Messiah with the $5 tip says what's happening. LOL. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks violator. Uh, macho macho macho. I'm a real estate procrastinating game. Cap with $5 tip says for the skeptics and non-believers. I didn't buy legendary tales till last week because of the price as well. And I am genuinely upset. I kept myself away for this long. Buy it. You heard it here. Agreed. Macho says to buy it. And AJ says to buy it. I also say buy it. Um, Living Legend with the Canadian $5 tip says, Happy Monday, Game Cats. You guys excited for Madison or what? Oh, man, you did you miss that part of the show? By the way, what game did you play yesterday for Mario Day? Yeah, today's 311 day. Yesterday was MAR. One zero Mario Day. I almost played Mario Super Mario sixty four on my N sixty four, and then I was like, "But I, I like VR, so I almost played Stilt." <laughs> but the truth is, I was just playing Cube in Little Cities the entire time. Excuse me. Um, yeah, because we don't have time, like y'all do. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm actually trying to figure out what game I was playing yesterday. Um, I guess, I guess Little Cities, <laughs> Jesus, uh, and then watched a lot of YouTube. Um, Living Legend says he played Sonic all day, baby, <laughs> which is perfect. Don't ever let those <laughs> console wars go, man. So it will always be <laughs> Nintendo versus Sega till the end of it's time. It's been 30 years. <laughs> Living Legend, let within- it go. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I was a Sonic kid, okay? I should have been a Mario kid, but I was a Sonic kid. Living Legend with another Canadian $5 tip. No one cares, AJ. So, <laughs> go ahead. What were you? Mario's better. Yeah, sirens on my end. Uh, Living Legend says, for the old school PC nerds, you know what game would be rad to play in VR? All of them. No, uh, Lion Studios Black and White. Too bad you can't purchase that game on Steam. Oh, that's crazy. Is that something you find on like good old games or something? I feel like it should still be around somewhere, right? going to say starcraft okay Okay. i don't know why okay just thinking about the last pc game i played (laughs) (laughs) okay 
last PC game I've played. I mean, I don't know. I was talking about Colonel's Bequest like all day yesterday. I don't, I don't know what that was about. Twitcher, the Deuce Juice Game Cat with the five quid says, twice tonight you've thanked me for my comments in chat. I appreciate it, but both counts were actually comments from Looper. LOL, hashtag credit where it's due. Stop being such a fucking thief, Twitcher. Right. AJ, you ready to play some 20 questions? Let's play some 20 cues. Oh, which, uh, by the way, I think I saw Rypop say uh, intelligent cube as a cube. That might have been what I was thinking of. Uh, yes. Leave it to Rypop yeah. to uh, to fill in the holes in my wrong. brain. Yep. Uh, everything I don't remember, Rypop seems to have the answer for. All right, you guys, you know how this works. It's 20 questions time. I've got a PSVR 1 or PSVR 2 game in my head. Oh, it's <laughs> definitely a PSVR 1 game. I mean, it's every <laughs> Munjay is always hard mode. <laughs> yeah, man. That's not like more than sticking it to AJ. <laughs> so brutal. So uh, brutal. More sirens on my end. Uh, guys, you please help him in the chat. He only has six minutes and 20 yes or no questions to figure out what PSVR 1 or PSVR 2 game I'm thinking of. So please give him good suggestions for questions and based on my responses, give him good suggestions for games. Are you ready? Yes. On your mark, get does. Go. I think I already know the answer to this question, but is it on PSVR 2? No. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. Nope. I just got to make sure, right? I don't want to like like play myself there mm -hmm. um does it uh support move controllers yes move controllers does it support the aim controller no jesus that would be so easy <laughs> that narrowed down to like 20 games is it a cartoony game um i mean y yes See, that's not as easy as people think it is to answer. Because, like, yeah, yeah, the Listen, graphics just look cartoony. Because I, I, I would say, I, I would say, not super cartoony, but like the character models are definitely cartoony, um, and the environment is a little less so. Hmm. Oh, I love the, I love the guest there, Silver Nexus. That's a good one, Apollo Eleven. That's that's fucking hard mode right there. <laughs> Maybe not anymore, but that would have been. Um. <clears throat> Is it an experience? No, I wouldn't call it an experience. There's definitely a game there. Um, how long you're going to play it? Indeterminate. Indeterminate. It's not. It's, so, AJ, so it's I'm a gonna, really I'm, short game. <laughs> there's not. There's not much of a game there. Is what I'll say. Okay. But but I would not call it an experience. No, that's five. Okay. See how much I'm helping you? This is how it's supposed to go. Are you... Uh, hmm. Oh, we didn't talk about Max Mustard. Who cares? <laughs> I care. You're it's, running out of time. A, you can talk a, about Max Mustard, but you only got four minutes left on the clock. It's clone. clone. Yeah. Um, Dragon Slayer 420 Backwoods 69 says, just got my PSVR 2. Welcome to the family. What are you, what are you doing right now? Time's a ticking. That's a really great name. <laughs> it's a great name. You're not going to get this. Okay. Um, is it a puzzle game? Uh, not really, no. Is it a horror game? No. Is it first person? Yep. And it uses, Damn it. I should have known that. It uses the moves. Um, uses the moves. Is it a shooter? It's not a shooter, but you do do some shooting. Is there full locomotion? No, that's 10. There's not full locomotion. Is it a wave shooter? Nope. Because he said you do some shooting, so it's not a wave shooter. There's no full locomotion. That should be a, a big help right there. Um, you should. I mean, there's still there's still 500 games to choose from, so it's not going to be that easy. But um, let's see here. Did it come out within the last two years of the PSVR life cycle? Did it come out in the last two years of the PSVR life cycle? What what two years of that? God, if I know. 
Uh, that the, thing lasted three more years than it should have. <laughs> no, uh, I'm kidding. I mean, y- yeah, it, it's definitely late gen. Late gen game. Yeah. It's not a wave shooter. Don't quote you... me on the exact two years because we don't know exactly what the last two years were. Is, Is it a like... rhythm game? No. Do you ride in any vehicles? Nope. Is it sports or sports related? No, that's 15. Shit. We're in trouble, guys. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Is it sci fi? No. So it's got a little bit of shooting. Did you say it's got a little bit of puzzles too? The game involves some kind of puzzle solving, but that's, I wouldn't put it, that might just steer you away. No, it's not, it's not, it, there's no puzzles in the game. It's like, is it more like, uh, well, it's not, I, I guess I can't ask if it, I don't want to waste the question on saying, is it like problem solving instead of puzzles, but no. you don't have to answer that if it's, it's not, an account. No. Is it multiplayer? Yes. Ooh. Do you play with cards? You do play with cards. Oh, I think Looper's got this one. And you won't do shut you up about yourself, it. <laughs> do, you, do you shoot yourself in the head? Uh, in some, sometimes you shoot yourself in the head and hope <laughs> that you don't. <laughs> Is it Bullet Roulette? AJ, coming out in 2021. I it is indeed it. bullet roulette. We're gonna, we're gonna have to limit Looper's involvement you've, in this game. You've pulled that one on me before, and I didn't get it last time, but I got it this time. So suck it, Brian. I, I think Looper got it this time. I think we give credit again. Hashtag credit no, where it's due. Like I'm Pitcher the told one us. Up here answering and reading the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one reading their comments. Okay. <laughs> yep. I now, get all the credit, <laughs> dude. This is a game that I absolutely love. Right, because I think the card game itself is fun. I think it's silly to you know, you know, shoot each other in VR. To have to shoot yourself and like actually like cringe. Like, please don't be loaded. Right. I, I this is a really fun game that should be included in another game somewhere. I, I don't. I never want to start this game up. That's always my problem. Is I never want to start this game up just to play a half an hour bullet roulette, get a bunch of people together and play this. I want this to be part of some other mini game collection or something where it's like, hey, we're all in here and this is one of the many things we're doing. Because I think it's great, but man, is it like, you know, you you only want to play it like once every few months or something. It was kind of fun. It was fun. Yep. Yep. We got some good footage of we all, did it, Cats. all of us playing this. We did it. Team uh, effort. Looper effort. Team effort. Team Looper. Looper is one part of the unstoppable team. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did he give us any uh, s- details on this? On uh, how many times it was picked? I feel it's like it's going to be. I, feel I like know maybe three times for me. I've picked this. Yeah, I, I I know you've picked it at least once before because I got really close and and you got it. You got me good with it. Um. Um, somebody said in between walkabout rounds, who said that, who said it, who said it, who said it, because I definitely agree with that. This would be perfect. Like to just, you know, be hanging out and playing this by the clubhouse when you're, uh, when, when you're waiting for everyone to show up. He's, he's oh, here a, it is. Silver Nexus. What? Silver oh, Nexus. Looper, is, what? Looper says it's the third time it's picked. First was August 6th, 2021. Brian to Dave and AJ failed. Uh, second was October 17th, 2022. Brian to AJ failed. I remember that one. But the third time is the charm. Because now it's a W. Now, now I can't pick it again for another year, according to the uh, the charts. All right. Um, whoa, where did AJ go? Clark, Clark, when did you get here? Clark Kent. I didn't, I didn't know I had a, 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 a journalist co-host you see the foveated rendering and the lenses in the in the the lenses are the most important part of the system and you can't you can't like psvr2 because the lenses brian is this your bentley impression is this your <laughs> sly cooper uh <laughs> cosplay i don't know i've never played sly dude that's you sound just like bentley the turtle 
Uh, Amazing. Spot on impression. I did voice acting for that. You didn't know that? I'm so done with you. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for hanging out today uh, during this ridiculous episode, as uh, they're all ridiculous episodes, but we thank you for being here. Uh, thank you to everybody who helps this channel run. All my moderators are amazing, if you didn't know. Uh, and, if you, and, if you, and if you don't know, or maybe you do know, come join our Discord. Click the link in the description below. While you're at it, subscribe to AJ's channel. He's going to be playing some more Legendary Tales soon enough, I'm sure. That'll be great. Dude, we've got the final... The final battle is the next stream. Good. It's probably not my last Legendary Tales stream, but it's the final battle of the main campaign. I have streamed this game, Brian, for 25 hours. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of it's a lot of streaming. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Uh, thank you to Rody, the GameCat Army General, for putting timestamps into the show after the fact. It's going to be a little late, I'm sure, as always. He's on tour, uh, so uh, give him a break. Uh, and uh, and Rypop for putting this up on podcast services of your choice. Thanks to everybody who supports the channel financially over here by being a member over on patreon.com slash without parole games uh, by being a Patreon supporter. Everyone who tips during the show, we thank you so very much. Everyone who hangs out and shoots the shit with us helps during 20 questions. Uh, and of course, everybody who sits back, watch the show and doesn't say a goddamn word. We know you're out there. We love you just as much. Kill the motherfucking cat, Brian, because I want to say see you guys on West Day to Macho, Macho, Macho. The real estate procrastinating game cat with the 199 donation says, Brian, sing There Goes My Hero to no. AJ for no. me, please. No. Nope. He said he declines. Awesome Tatum <laughs> says, two years. We have always lived in the castle, Mary Cat. You rock. Uh, Twister, the deuce juice game cat says, daylight savings in the US. Yes, there's people just joining right now. <laughs> Realize, I guess, this happens every year, I swear. Uh, Beard of Power 666, bye bye to you. Guys, on fist bump to you. Flippy Nuggets off to hunt some S Class Sentinel interceptors. Nice show, gents. I got that reference. Hell yeah, man. Happy hunting. Ace Game Lover, the Game Cat says, smash that thumbs up. Uh, Ace Bill, member of four months level one membership, says, using my monthly to shout out the mods. Don't, don't shout them out, Ace Bill. They didn't do anything to deserve it. They, they only take. Um, uh, especially Nick Milo. This is uh, this is why no one wants to mod your channel, and, and why and why they love modding mine. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure they're real excited to mod your channel. Yeah, <laughs> no one, no one's excited about my channel these days. <laughs> <laughs> Melkaya, the Soul Raven Game Cat. Shout out to you uh, who jumped in. Oh my uh, god, are we gonna talk and, about motorboating again? Here no, it is. No, yeah. Oh, no, we're gonna, I. Uh, I uh, no, we traded. Uh, I traded some potions. He wanted to help me uh, speed up my stream of the grinding, so I traded a legendary wand for some potions, Brian. And then I motorboated the shit out of Lo Doo Doo Lone Wolf. <laughs> I actually I smacked them around first because they were like you could smack them, and I was like, really? And I was like, oh wow, yeah, you can. And then and then I I gave him a goodbye hug, and I went. <laughs> Gaza, uh, uh, Cambo Blue Game Cat, Brian's so done. Uh, Random Toxy, the PSVR 2 is apparently dead cat. Says cats rock uh, with an R A W K. Andrew Bailey and stuff says night night game cats and stuff. Uh, Grandpa Barbecue Game Cat with a $5 donation. Thanks so much. Says an hour behind. But from what I've watched so far, all I can say is yes, Brian, you have your podcast back. Know your place, AJ. <laughs> know your place. <laughs> I love the fire. I love the enthusiasm. Um, Ian Marsh, the Darsh, good night. Uh, Headbite, uh, thank you so much, man. Silver Nexus, you're legendary. All of you, you're so lovely. I love you. Guys, real quick. Happy birthday to Scott, the PSVR game cat for life. Long time, hardcore, real as F. Holy game shit. Cat it's his birthday again? It was it's just his birthday I, last I, year. I remember wishing him a happy birthday like, seemingly just one year ago today. And I was going to say, I feel like we always wish him a birthday on Gamescast because he's always here because he's so freaking awesome. Yep. Yep. This is how this is how I want to spend my birthday too. Sitting right fucking here doing this shit with you <laughs> on your show. <laughs> Brian, but this is mm -hmm. there there is one more really important piece of information we need here. But of course there is. The the big question is, AJ, would you like to see what happened on this day in PSVR without Pearl history two years ago? Yeehaw! Or three years ago. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I feel like we've been 
how long are we doing this bit for? Because about 19 is years. It gonna run, <laughs> is it going to run into each other? Like, yeah, like are we sure. going to repeat well, what that's happens a, in history? That, that's, that's the great thing is that every year that we, every year that goes on, we have another year to look back on. And so, you know, because now we've got, we've just gotten to the point, I don't know, last month or something where the thumbnails actually have words on them and you can see, it's not just a collage of shit. So like, you know, yeah. So now we have let's, more options. Let's let the birthday boy decide. Scott. No oh boy. Birthday boy. Oh boy. Two years or three years ago in games cast history. Your pick. And now we sit and wait. And now we wait. Uh, Mad Vegan says three. So that's the first one to chime in. This is this is fucking entertaining. All night. Entertaining podcasting all right night. here. Yeah. <laughs> now a moment of silence. This is nice, actually. So what you, so what you up to? We're so noisy all the time, man. That's like I know, especially me. Okay, Scott says three. Here we go. Let's okay. check what happened on this day in history. You're, you're fucking loud, dude. <laughs> <laughs> After I'm done with the show with you, I just fucking want to take the headphones off and just sit and <laughs> sit in the dark and silence for like go into one of those sleep twenty four hours. <laughs> yeah, tornado just stares at me. I stare at her. It's very quiet. All right, here's what three uh, back on three eleven twenty one. Here's what was going on with that pearl history. Uh, the Didn't headline is original. PSVR two games question mark really question mark and then updates on Doom three VR Swordsman VR Zero Caliber Hell Split Arena and more AJ. Uh, let me just tell you, Zero Caliber never came out to PSVR one. Hell Split <laughs> Arena never came to PSVR one. Um, what the fuck? I want to know what's going on in this show. PSVR two games really? Yeah, I don't. I'm so curious about that. What does that even mean? I don't know. I, somebody go back and watch the show and then comment on this video and tell us oh what it means. Well, I'm not going to do any extra work, man. You're so lazy. <laughs> I'm so lazy. I'm so lazy. Yeah. Um, well, little did we know we still had two more years. No. PSVR 2 to come out. PSVR 2 games, really? No, Brian, not really. It's just, it's all in your head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Let's get out of here. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We love you so very much. Uh, I gotta go. I gotta go work on little cities bigger. Good night. We love you. Oh, Scott says no, no, no. I mean two. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe next year. Maybe next year we'll we'll count your vote. <laughs> <laughs>